What's up everyone out there? Welcome to Children of a Dead Earth, the realistic space combat simulator. My name is Rudy, and today we are looking at a fantastic ship called the Laser Gunship. This was posted to the forums by a uh, user Gadaranis, and it is a nice little ship. It's small, it packs a single 10 gigawatt titanium sapphire violet laser, uh, it has a multiple a multi-nuke launcher. This ship has quite a bit of versatility between the laser and the multi-nuke launcher. Down the length of the ship we have two gigawatt thermoelectric fission reactors providing all the power we need and decane magnetoplasma dynamic thrusters. We have this 200 ton decane tank in the rear and a bunch of other thrusters. It's very nice and a 54 member crew module. In a previous video I fought a much much larger ship with like I think 59 10 gigawatt lasers uh, that ship was called the laser show and I actually talk about that ship quite a bit in a previous video there is a link in the description so certainly check that out in that video I basically fought the laser show and was able to defeat it now I'm going to do that with the laser gunship and I've tried out some things against a laser gunship and this ship ultimately turned out to be much more difficult so let's uh take a look at the ship that I'll be using to fight the laser gunship this is the NS-class anti-laser ship. Well, it's not really an anti-laser ship. This just happened to be the last ship that I designed and I used it against the laser show. It's just got these two rail guns on the front, a load of decane and some decane nuclear thrusters at the end and a 40 member crew module. It's a small ship, only 63 meters in length, coming in at 28.4 MC, so kind of expensive uh, compared to the laser gunship, which I think is only 16 MC. Let's jump in the sandbox here. For the enemy craft, we'll be going up against the laser gunship, of course. Let's uh, spend 100 MC, how about? If you take too many ships, then of course the game will sort of fail and crash, and we certainly don't want our battle to be interrupted by the game crashing or poor frame rates. Okay, so four NS versus six laser gunships, that doesn't quite match up. Maybe we can take one more laser gunship. Okay, so 115 MC versus 113 MC. All right, let's give this a shot. All right, things are looking good. We're here at Herculina. These uh, laser gunships have an engagement range of a thousand kilometers, whereas my guns have a range of, you know, just a couple of dozen kilometers, effective range anyway. So what we need to do is we need to get a very, very quick intercept. So I'm going to burn radially, then I'll do tangential. So yeah, you see we're already getting an intercept all these like thousands of meters away from the target ship. We have a closest approach of 951 kilometers. I think when you're doing intercepts against ships with really huge engagement ranges, you just kind of have to ignore the closest approach. What's really important is the parallel vector here, 1.53 kilometers per second versus the perpendicular, which is 39.2 meters per second. So that effectively means that I'm going straight at the enemy at 1.53 at kilometers per second, and I'm really not veering off to the side all too much at only 39.2 meters per second. But we can probably get a much more quick approach. If I burn more radially, we'll see our parallel uh, velocity is increasing. So we can get, yeah, we get our perpendicular down to 40 point, 42 meters per second. Let's get it down to 42 meters per second, the meaning of it all. Perfect. With a parallel approach of 2.62 kilometers per second. So even though this has the closest approach of 924 kilometers, we are actually going to fly right by them, close enough to touch them. And in these types of situations, this is where it's really important to have ships with good acceleration because these ships have an acceleration of almost 1g if that were not so then as, as you'll see I'm, I can accelerate up to the desired velocity within five minutes and 41 seconds about that's this orange vector here but if I had less acceleration I could very well end up having to accelerate along this entire vector and possibly enter the enemy engagement before I'm done fully accelerating which would be an issue so let's get going I'll just go one hour they're trying to evade, but they won't. All right, so here we are in combat. They had launched some nukes, 
but the enemy, the AI, doesn't seem too keen on setting up intercepts with missiles versus my ballistic trajectory. And we're approaching the enemy at 2.62 kilometers per second. Our long trip across the engagement zone will probably take about 400 seconds. And we can see Herculina in the background moving. So now they're firing their lasers at me. I've armored my turrets with uh, one meter of silica aerogel, but they're probably going to start taking them out pretty quickly. Mm, yeah, I'm losing all my turrets. All right, yeah, my turrets have been taken out. I am not surprised one bit. So we have been defeated already. Let's see. Well, I just happen to have a new type of ship that we can try out. Let's see. I have the NS... What's the... I have the NS2 or the NS3. Let's uh, take a look at the NS2. So this ship has uh, two 140-megawatt 8mm turreted railguns. These... Uh, these railguns have a muzzle velocity to 15.3 kilometers per second, so I can much more effectively take out smaller targets at range. And I've just loaded it up with uh, armor of 50 centimeters of silica aerogel. So this ship is kind of expensive at 27.2 MC. I haven't actually uh, tried this ship, so I'm looking forward to seeing how it turns out. So we have 115 MC. So that brings us to 136 MC. I guess I'll go with it give myself a slight advantage. Okay, now these ships have considerably lower acceleration, so we might have a hard time getting... Okay, we have a relative velocity of 3.35 kilometers per second. Notice how my acceleration vector is going all the way into the enemy intercept. Let's uh, see how this goes. All right, so we're going to have a flyby of four minutes at 3.59 kilometers per second. Let's see how our aerogel holds up. Now, of course, if the AI was smart, they would just wipe out all of my radiators and disable all of my ships, but, well, the AI doesn't really think, so. And I'm worried that they're going to take out one turret after the other. I'm going to set one of these ships to home in on the enemy. Sometimes AI will just prioritize the closest target. Yeah, see, they're prioritizing this one ship now, since it's closer. Keeping all the other ships safe, and they've lost both railguns, and now the AI is concentrating on my silica aerogel hat. My cone, if you will. Now, I of course could orient broadside and start firing from this extreme range, hoping that some of my railgun rounds will take out enemy radiators, but it won't be too effective. The enemy is at 400 kilometers. And let's see, looking at the rangefinder here, I see that my uh, railguns have a, I guess, recommended range of 115 kilometers. Up, oh, crap, one of my ships got killed. So I think I should probably go through the same procedure, send one ship forward to start tanking. We're pro approaching 200 kilometers pretty soon. So what happened? How did the crew module get taken out? Did, like, one laser somehow... Looks like there's some armor damage back here. I'm not sure... Yeah, they just punched in right through the frontier. Okay, we are at the 200 kilometer mark. So I could probably... I should, uh, start firing on the enemy. Orient broadside. All ships, orient broadside. And ignore range. Alright. Here we go. Come on, you can do it! Ignore range! Alright. Oh, they're firing their multi-nukes now. Yeah, they're getting there. Okay, you can stop prioritizing that target now. Target, uh... The nukes are now detonating. Okay, here I come at that ridiculous speed. Okay, they're out of arc now. Need to turn around. Yes, take him out.
They're firing back on me now. They've turned around. How's this gonna go? All right, we're taking off those radiators quite effectively. I think that ship can't fire anymore. Let's target this one. Oh, right. Um, hmm. Yeah, see, what I should have been doing is I should have been setting high priority targets as the enemy ships were being damaged, but I was neglecting to actually toggle the high priority icon, so unfortunately that means I was only able to take out two ships, but I probably could have taken out a couple more if I was quicker. Okay, well, so these uh, laser ships definitely won the day. I was able to do some damage. All right, let's try out the NS-3. We can have five NS-3s versus seven laser gunships. So, I mean, the main difference between this ship is that it has only aerogel. It just has a regular 7mm turreted railgun. All right. And, of course, our... All right, let's uh, get our intercept going. How much Delta V do we dare burn? We need to bring our perpendicular down, and we need to increase our parallel. That gives us a parallel of 2.86 kilometers per second. I guess that's the best we're going to get. So, I mean, it seems like we fully accelerated, even though our acceleration vector brought us to the... within the enemy, uh... Yeah, see, all of their lasers can't even get in my turrets right now because of my aerogel shield, it looks like. Now they're concentrating on one ship. But yeah, it looks like there's some kind of bug, because uh, the orange acceleration vector actually extended into the enemy's engagement zone. But here I am at the edge of the engagement zone, and I've spent all the fuel that the burn required, and I'm moving at the desired velocity. So there is that. There's some kind of bug there. You know, seeing the way that these ships perform so far, I wonder if maybe if I took the NS-2 and combined the principles of the NS-3. Like, I think uh, having the the uh, higher muzzle velocity railgun combined with this concept of an aerogel shield in the front might be the best way to go. Oh, look at this. You can see some of the lasers are actually cutting through the shield now, hitting the radiator and also hitting the turret. That is amazing. Oh, we lost a turret. Now they're trying to go for the other one. You know what? I'm not going to let you do that. We are going to... Oh, they killed my turret. I was going to reorient my ship, but it's too late now. The turret has been destroyed. And then, of course, the AI is continuing to concentrate on this one ship, even though it is no threat to them. Oh, they lost a radiator. Shit. Okay, it's almost time for combat. We're at 200 kilometers. I think, uh... I think we should wait till we get to 150. Or so. Yeah, this... Let's do it. So, ignore range on every weapon and orient broadside. Okay, they're launching nukes. There goes one ship. Alright, another one down. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Target this one now. Come on, guys, you're getting out of range. You're running out of time. Alright, now I want you to focus on this final ship. Hopefully this is gonna, this blast will take care of it. 
No, they're missing. How are my ships doing? Oh, nice. The enemy is at almost 400 kilometers now. Okay, well, I'm going to call it here. I mean, there is a small, small chance that I would be able to take out these other two ships from this range, but I don't feel like sticking around and waiting for that to happen. So, all in all, I think these ships were fairly effective. If I probably could have stood to start firing earlier instead of waiting till I was only at 150 kilometers, because then I would have had more opportunity to fire, 200 kilometers probably would have been good. Of course, I mean, if each ship was smart enough to independently target its own enemy ship and take it out, that would be great. And then, of course, the counter to that would be that the AI should be smart enough to take out each of my individual ship's radiators as well. So, I guess that's kind of watch. I don't know. So, if you liked the video, hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. I think I'll be doing a part two at some point in the near future where I'll try out some nukes and drones against these ships. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.